Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to write a simple function in R. So when we're coding in R, we use functions all the time. So we use functions to print um, out code, we use functions to save files, we use functions to open files, and we use functions to uh, calculate some simple statistics. So let's take a look at one of those first to understand first how functions work, and then we'll go and write our first function. So the empty cars um, data set, if I just run line four there, is a data set uh, within, um, within R, R that we use for many, many, many things when we're practicing our R code. And we can see here uh, in the output console that there are lots of different types of cars and lots of different variables. And the variable I'm interested in is the displacement. So supposing I want to do something simple, like calculate the mean displacement value for all the cars in this data set. So let's go ahead and do that. And we use the mean function to do that mean, open and close brackets, and then pass the variable that I want to um, have the calculation done for. So that's mean um, dollar sign, and I'm going to use displacement. So when I do this, I calculate the mean, and you can see it returns a value of 230.7219. So that's the mean value of, of the, all the displacements in all the cars in our data set. So let's, for, before we write our own, let's try and understand what's going on here. So we have some diagrams. I'm going to take a look at 66A diagram that, that um, partners this video. And this di diagram, as well as all our scripts and all sample files in this series of videos, are available in my GitHub. And you'll find a link to that in the information area beneath the video on the YouTube page. So we're going to take a look at the first diagram. And what this does is, it, at a high level, shows how functions work. So on the left-hand side, we are writing our main script. So this is where we're doing all our code. And then we would have a function which will do certain things for us, such as calculate the mean or calculate the variance or standard deviation or print something for us. In other words, we don't have to write the code in that function. We can reuse it over and over and call on it. So what simply we do, we pass it an argument or arguments. It does what the function code is designed to do, and then it will return a value back to the main script, and we can make use of that value. So in the case of the mean function, I'm going to take a look at 66b, the diagram. In the case of the mean function, what's simply happening is I have written mean empty cars dollar sign displacement. So that means that that variable and that variable only is being passed to the mean function. And within that, you can see the uh, mean um, function. All it does is it calculates x bar, that's the sample mean, which is equal to the sum of x, which is uh, uh, adding up all the values, in this case, the, all the displacement values, and dividing by n, the number of values. So that's the mean or the average of a value. And then the uh, uh, answer that we get, 230. 30.7219 is returned back to the main piece of code and then we can do further calculations or use it for uh, to gain insights in our data analysis. So let's say, so many, many functions are already written for us and we don't have to rewrite the code to do all of that. So let's say we want to write our own function. We want to develop a piece of code that will do a piece of analysis for us that may not be available or may need to be modified on what's available already. So I'm going to create, uh, in this video, I'm going to do two functions. In the first video, I want to write a function that passes one parameter. And the example I'm going to use is I want to uh, write a function to square a number. So the first thing I do, I need a function name. So I'm going to just call it sqr num, call it square num. And I'm going to assign it using the function function. So the function, when we create a function, we use the function function name. And uh, in this, uh, the function name in brackets here is going to receive a value. So in this case here, I'm going to receive a value uh, for a number, n for num, number. And then after this, I'm going to put in curly brackets and press enter. And so R the studio then knows that I am now writing a function. So this line of code here on line eight uh, tells me that the my new function that I am creating is going to be called square num. And the function itself is going to receive one value, which is n. So I'm going to, when I'm using the square num function, pass a value, and I want the square num function then to square that value. So I need a variable in here. So I'm sqr, that's the square variable, and assign it. And the simplest way to square a value is just to multiply it by itself. So n multiplied by n, like remember, n doesn't have a value yet. I should use a small n there. So n multiplied by n will square a number. And then I want to return that value return my value for square. So 
and again create the typo there. So uh, what I'm doing is the function will receive a value n, which I've yet to decide what it is. When it receives that value, it runs these two lines of code. The first on line 9 will perform the square and store the result in a variable called sqr. And then on line 10, I'm going to return that value uh, back to uh, my main piece of code. And I have a closing bracket to close off my piece of code. So now what I can do is I can place my cursor at the end or I can select all of this piece of code. I can run this and now my function is active because you can see over in the global environment that we have a function called square num. You can see it's listing functions and this is what it's going to do. So now what I can do is I can now use that function and I can pass a value to it and it will return a value to me. So I'm going to use sqrnum, remember the spelling is uh, has to be exactly the same as the function name. So sqr capital NUM is my function name. And let's say I just want to get the square of the value 5. Now we know that 5 uh, squared is 25. So let's see if our function works. So when I run line 13, we can see in the console that we are getting a result of 25. If I wanted to square another value, let's say I wanted to square a value 24, so run that, and we can see that the square of 24 is 576. So now we have a piece of code that we can use uh, over and over. Now there are there is a function square numbers already, but this just shows you um, how a, a simple function can work. So this is just about as simple as a function as you can do. Now that this function, sqr num, uh, receives one value and returns one value. So supposing I want to write a function uh, that receives two values and that will return one value. So I want to write a function that will perform the mathematical operation uh, to, to get the power of a number. So I'm going to call this function power, power of, again using the function, function, get used to the terminology here and then open and close curly brackets and press enter and we're now ready to write the body of our function. So in this case here I'm going to build up a piece of output so what I want to do is I want to pass this function two values so I'm going to just use simple variable names x comma and y as the two values that are received so if I want to for example get 2 to the power of 3 uh, x will have a value of 2 and y will have a value of 3 in that order. So in here, uh, so that we've got a meaningful output, I'm going to use the print paste functions. Print paste functions, I'm going to build up my answer in here in the print paste. So I want to say, well, at, at the first value, which is x, and then you put in a piece of text to the power of, and close that off with, a, with an inverted comma and another comma. So x to the power of y, so the two values that I pass in, so this will be, if I pass in the, the numbers 2 to the power of 3, so x will have a value of 2, and y will have a, a value of 3. So this statement so far will say 2 to the power of 3. And then we need to go and calculate, uh, uh, finish off our piece of code here. So y with a comma after it uh, is, put to keep the uh, text going well, another comma, and then uh, use x to the power of y. Okay, and in this case here, we don't need to use the return function. Um, so we only use the return function when we're not sure what value we're sending back. So a function will automatically send back the last value. So the last calculation here is x to the power of y. So now let me select these three lines of code and run this to check for errors. We can see that our code runs successfully. And over in our global environment, we see we have another function uh, which accepts two values, x and y. So let's put this to the test. So power of, of pass it two values I'm going to do 2 to the power of 3 run this function and two, we get an output here we can see in our print paste function that we built it up 2 to the power of 3 is 8 so that uh, so 2 by 2 by 2 that is 8 so that's the correct answer if I want to try this on another power of uh, 3 to the power of 5 run line 20 we can see that 3 to the power of 5 is 243 and so on. So now we have written uh, two functions, one called square num, which accepts one value, and the second called power of, which accepts two values. So this should give you an idea of um, how basic functions work. So I would urge you to uh, try out these functions and try out various uh, versions on these. You could try out functions for lots and lots of different mathematical options. Why not write a function to uh, do a, um, a mathematical calculation and plot a chart, for example. So you can create your own functions. This just gets you started. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.